everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I am letting you know what I watched in March of 2022 besides movies for my Never Seen It segment. This is comprised of movies that I go to the theater to see, movies and TV on streaming, and then also films that I already have in my collection and I've seen before, but I just wanted to revisit. I just like to give you my overall thoughts about everything because not everything that I watch are never seen items. And the month of March, I actually watched a lot of items on streaming. So this is going to be a nice, fun, casual chat of a video. Before I get started, if you are new here on my channel and you really love and adore physical media, just like I do, then please consider hitting that red subscribe down below as well as the like button, but most importantly, that little notification bell so you don't miss anything in the future. We have a lot of fun on this channel and please consider joining the Movies and Sue family. So let's get started with in the theater. What did I go to the theater to see? Now, the month of March was kind of slow for going to the theater. I only saw two movies. The first one being, of course, The Batman. How could I not go and see this? Right in the Dolby, front and center. Well, I wasn't center. I was kind of off to the side. That's kind of my chosen seat is off to the side. But I had I had a wonderful experience with The Batman. I gotta be honest. When Robert Pattinson was first announced as being the Batman, as taking over this prize character that a lot of us enjoy. I know many people were very skeptical about this, but I was always in his corner. I always felt inside of me that Robert Pattinson is so beyond Twilight. And he's proven this time and time again with a string of independent and underground films including The Lighthouse, was, which was absolutely amazing. He did not get enough credit for his performance in that movie. So when I heard about his casting for The Batman, I was thrilled. I knew he was going to do a great job, but I, I was not prepared for what I saw in front of me. The way he maneuvered as Batman, the way he would express himself by not even saying a word, with just looking at someone, was effective. I was blown away by his performance. I love the entire movie as a whole. Matt Reeves, who directed this, knew exactly the tone and vibe that he wanted to encapsulate when he made this movie. Very Seven-like. It's a film noir feel. It's dark in tone. And I was here for it. It felt very much like a Batman graphic novel. Now, I have not read any graphic novels or comics even if you can believe it i love comic book movies but i have not read any actual comics this felt like a graphic novel the way it was dark and brooding i loved it i highly enjoyed this feel it was different from any other batman movie that we have seen and considering that there's a lot out there that is hard to do so i love the interpretation that matt reeves presented in front of us also, what he succeeded in doing was balancing the villains. Because when you have multiple villains in one movie, sometimes one can outshine the others. That did not happen in this film. Granted, Riddler was the main villain, and we all knew that. But he balanced it off very well between Penguin and Catwoman, who borderlines as an anti-hero. She's not a full-on villain. You know, she rides the line there. But she put, she's put under the villain umbrella. It was very nicely balanced between all three of them, but it was very well known that Riddler was our main villain in this film. I loved it. Everything was A plus for me. I had a great time. Even though it is a three hour runtime, it does not feel like that. The pace just moves very smoothly and you're not checking your watch to see what time it is. So overall, Batman, the Batman, is a win and you should go and see it in your local theater if you have not already. But if you cannot for some reason, you will not have to wait very long because the Batman will be coming to HBO Max in 18 days, April 19th. So get ready, guys. We're going to be able to watch The Batman at home very soon. How exciting is that? All right, my other movie that I went to go see, the movie X. I am recently into horror. I love the horror genre. I'm getting into it more and more. So when people were talking about the movie X, I was intrigued by it. I got to admit, my curiosity was peaked. My little antenna went up and I was like, "What? what's going on with this movie? 
I got to go and see it for some reason. So I went on opening day. It was like afternoon time, the, the perfect time to go and see a horror film. It was me and three other women in the theater, if you could believe it or not. And I believe we all enjoyed this film. Now, the movie X, granted, is weird. And I knew this walking in because it's by the studio A24. They're known for producing very out there kind of make you think movies. They're not your normal horror schlocky films that we love to enjoy. It's not a Halloween. It's not a Scream. It's not a Jason Voorhees. It's its own entity. The whole A24 studio, they put out movies like Midsommar and Hereditary. So you already know walking in what kind of vibe you're going to be dealing with when you watch the movie X. Now it starts off with a pretty basic concept. You have six people, including Jenna Ortega, who is turning into a scream queen. She's in all these all these horror movies lately, which is very nice to see. So you have six people that want to make an adult film. They want to make the best adult film as possible that they can. So I don't know, a classy film. Now, this starts off with very Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes, which I was totally digging. I love the first half of this film. And then once you reach a certain point, it flips the script and it gets very, very weird. And it goes places that you don't expect. I did a YouTube short review about this film and I said at points it was disgusting, disturbing, intriguing, and also just plain out weird. But I did enjoy watching it. I'm getting the feeling it's because it's going to become one of those those horror cult classics that you will come to appreciate in the future. It's one of those movies you're probably going to have to watch a handful of times and then you'll really start getting into it and appreciating it. But I have to say the number one plus about this movie overall are the kills. The kills are gory and they're all done differently. And that I really love. They're very creative when it comes to the kills. So overall, do I recommend for you to go and see X in the theater? Yes, I do. If you are a horror movie fanatic, yes, definitely. And if you are one that can appreciate the weird and the wacky, then yes, I do recommend too. But if you are a normal horror fan and you're really not into all that weirdness, I would probably avoid wait for streaming. Possibly if it comes on to streaming, maybe buy it when it comes to Blu-ray. All right, so what did I watch on streaming in the month of March? I actually need a paper because I watched so many things. I cannot remember everything. So let's start with Fresh over on Hulu with Sebastian Stan. Now, I was interested in this one. Because, number one, it's got Sebastian Stan. Who would not want to watch this because he is very nice to look at. Okay, so that was the number one reason. But also, I was kind of intrigued by the concept because I wasn't really sure 100% what this film was about. And then you realize that they go there. Cannibalism. Now, I don't normally gravitate towards, towards horror movies that focus on this part of the genre. But it was done in such a way where you were not completely grossed out. Don't get me wrong, there's there's a couple of moments where it rides the line just a little bit of going too far, of going over that edge, but it kind it pulls back just in time and you can recover. Um pretty much the ending, I would have changed the ending just a little bit. It was kind of like, okay, every movie kind of ends like this. Why couldn't we have done something different? But the overall concept of the film, it is fresh, no pun intended, fresh, it's original, and anything that's original in concept will always get more points for me than a sequel or a prequel. So overall, I did enjoy watching fresh, but it was a one-time watch for me. I don't need to watch this on repeat. It's not one of those. If it came out on Blu-ray, I probably wouldn't pick it up. Maybe I would. I don't know. I probably want it, but I watched it once. I'm good. Let's move on to Pam and Tommy, also on Hulu, also with Sebastian Stan. I did finish up this series. I started watching it in February, and then I kind of dropped off, and then I finished it up all in one night in March. So overall, I enjoyed watching the series because I knew of the events. I was growing up during this time, but I was not aware 
of the interrogation that happened, especially with Pamela Anderson, because this couple chose to make a home movie not meant for anyone else to see, and they were treated like they murdered someone. It was absolutely crazy and insane to me how they were treated and how everything developed and the result it really opened your eyes to the entire situation. Now, Sebastian Stan played Tommy Lee. Again, <laughs> Sebastian Stan, great job. But Lily James as Pam Anderson really showed her skills in the series. And I think it was episode six. Her acting, amazing. I would give her some kind of award based on that episode. I thought she she looked just like Pamela Anderson, she sounded like Pam. She just overall embodied Pamela Anderson. And that is pretty amazing when an actor can accomplish that. The only bad thing that I could say or negative thing that I could say about this series is the end. Again, for some reason, it felt like they just wanted to wrap things up extremely quickly. Like, okay, we've done enough. Let's wrap it up, put a bow on it, and we're done. I wish they didn't do that. I wish they ended it kind of in a different way. But overall, do I think you should watch it? Yes, I do. It is worth your time. Okay, let's move on next to Halloween Kills. Now, this recently debuted on HBO Max. Even though I already have two physical media copies, I was cleaning my room. And when I'm cleaning, I always want to have something on my TV to, you know, distract my brain from what I'm doing. So I went on HBO Max and I knew that Halloween Kills just dropped. So I put it on there. I got to say, every time I watch it, I appreciate it just a little bit more. I think you need to watch it again and again to like it more because a lot of people were really harsh on Halloween Kills. And I think because... Michael Myers is like the gold standard for horror films. And if it doesn't live up to our expectations, we just want to rip it apart. It's really not that bad, guys. Give it another chance, please. It has some of the most creative kills in the entire franchise because he's using different weapons. He used the chainsaw on the firefighters, the fluorescent bulb on the woman in the house. Those are creative. Those are great. Was he expressing his anger a little bit too much in parts? Probably, but he was set on fire, so it is kind of understandable. Now, the only thing that I have that that's still a negative is the evil dies tonight. That whole chanting and the entire mob situation with the mental patient, that was ridiculous. That's my only big major complaint about the entire film, but watching Halloween Kills, it was nice. It was definitely a good distractor Well. I'm cleaning my room and I'm dusting my furniture. Okay, next up on my watch list is Deep Water. Ben Affleck, Ana de Armas, again, off of Hulu. Now, I was kind of excited. I saw the trailer and I got some kind of idea of what this film was going to be about, but I really was not prepared for, for what this film was going to turn out to be. Basically, Ana de Armas and Ben Affleck play a married couple she likes to go out and have affairs because, quote unquote, that's just how she is. You know, let's just accept it. And that's what Ben Affleck does. He just accepts it because he loves her so much. He doesn't want to leave her. Does this sound like anyone familiar in Hollywood right now? I mean, I joked about it before, but it's actually kind of true. Let's be honest. So these two are kind of in this very unhealthy, negative cycle can I reveal the twist of what happens? I don't know if I should or not. Let's just say it's not a good result for the men that she decides to cheat with. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to mention. I'm not going to fully on spoil this, but the first half, it was good. It was strong. But then the second half, it kind of got a little bit too repetitive for me and the ending just didn't work. I expected something a little bit more, a little bit different. It just did not cross that finish line of like, yes, we got a great streaming movie. So it was a little disappointing because you have two pretty much A-list actors right now doing a movie like this on streaming. And when it doesn't come to fruition, it's a little disappointing. So Deep Water, you can miss this one. I'm not recommending it. You can miss this one. Let it slide and just move on to something else. Like I'm going to move on to the next thing to talk about. Life and Beth. Life and Beth is a series with Amy Schumer. Now she wrote this. She created it. She's directed some episodes. 
she produced it. It's all, it's like the Amy Schumer show is what it is. Pretty much all you need is her name on everything. She did everything. Costumes, makeup, technical. She was the grip. Like she did everything. I'm joking. She didn't really do everything, but it seems like that. But with this series, I feel like we have a little bit more of a grown up Amy Schumer because as we know, when she first started, when she really like broke out and everyone knew about her, it was all about sex and drinking and hooking up and one night stands and all that stuff. And we all love Amy Schumer for that. I enjoy Amy Schumer. I, I like her sense of humor. I think she's funny. A lot of people don't and that is okay. I do. That's the reason why I watch the show. But I can really tell that she is growing up when it comes to what she wants to talk about and what she wants to say, especially with her comedy, because with this series, it was more grown up. She's dealing with more grown up issues in the show as she would in the past. And that is refreshing to see. She is still funny, not as funny as I would like her to be. But I am accepting it because she's married and she's a mom now. So she kind of has to go in a different direction as far as her career is, you know, for the sake of her career. And I think she's doing that. And I did enjoy watching the show. It wasn't like, wow, that was a great show. But if season two does occur, I will watch it. If you like Amy Schumer, I recommend that you watch the series. Next up on my list is Phoenix Rising on HBO Max. Now, this is a documentary. I know, Susan watched a documentary. I don't even know why. Again, I was kind of distracting myself as I was doing prep work for a video for YouTube here, and I just randomly put on a documentary. But I was interested because this documentary is about Evan Rachel Wood, who is an actress. If you are unfamiliar with her and her situation, pretty much she dated Marilyn Manson. And there's a lot of allegations against him right now, race car, there's a lot of allega allegations against him right now as far as sexual assault and, and just a lot of things. A lot, I'm just going to say a lot of things. So this is the documentary about Evan Rachel Wood and her experience. And this is pretty much her speaking out against him and describing in detail what happened. It was a fascinating documentary. It was very smart, intelligently done, and I appreciate that. And I really hope that she can find some peace in her life because I know she's been through a lot. I do believe her. I do. I don't think that she would go this far to make all of this stuff up and have a documentary if it was not true. I totally believe her and her circumstances, and I wish nothing but well for her, her family, her son, because they've been through a lot. It's three hours long but it's broken up into two parts, hour and a half, hour and a half. So if you can watch the first part and then revisit the second part later, that's what I did. And it was a quick, fast watch for me. So it was very engrossing. I do recommend that you watch this. All right, my last streaming item on HBO Max, Death on the Nile. Now, not only is it on HBO Max, it is also on Hulu. So if you don't have HBO Max, you can get it over there. So Death on the Nile. Okay, I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a good, solid movie, but it's not rewatchable for me. So I'm really happy that I watched this before Tuesday because the physical media of this film is coming out on Tuesday and I was going to pick up that 4K, but I'm not going to do that anymore. But if I do, I'm going to wait for a sale. I'm not going to buy it day one. There's no need to do so because pretty much Death on the Nile, if you were not aware, is a whodunit. It, I think it's the follow-up to Murder on the Orient Express. Kenneth Branagh plays the world-renowned detective and you have Gal Gadot, Army Hammer. You have a, an extensive celebrity cast of everyone that is on the ship and everyone that is a suspect. But pretty much once you know whodunit, do you need to watch it again? That's the big thing. That is the drawback with murder mystery type of films, except for the movie Clue. Because let's be honest, the movie Clue is iconic. <laughs> like You need to have that in your collection. But I don't feel the need to buy this one or watch it again anytime soon because I already know who did it. But I do highly recommend that you watch it if you have not seen it because I do think it's a, a great movie to watch on a random like maybe date night you want to stay in on a Friday or a Saturday put on death on the Nile the cast is solid and it it's enjoyable it's a solid movie overall great cast solid movie Whew. 
That is everything for streaming. I watched a lot. But now let's get into what movies did I watch from my physical media collection that I've already seen before. I'm going to zip through this really quick because I know I'm probably already at 20 minutes. So let's bing, bang, boom, really, really quickly. Now, the month of March was all for Oscar nominated and also winning movies because it was it was awards month because the Oscars. So I wanted to dedicate myself to that. So really quickly watch Spencer my mom finally watched it I took her to the movies to see it she fell asleep so she finally got to watch this in its entirety so that was great Richard Jewell wonderful biopic I so recommend this if you guys have not seen Richard Richard Jewell one of the best Clint Eastwood movies very nicely done plus it's got Sam Rockwell it's got my man Sam okay one of my favorites the favorite it's it's weird it's wacky but you cannot deny these performances olivia coleman won her best actress oscar for this it's an amazing movie you gotta brace yourself at some points but it again it's one of those once you watch it on repeat a couple times you get more into it trust me i thought the same thing and i've gotten more into it and now it's one of my favorite movies okay her with joaquin you know how i feel about joaquin Watch that Uncut Gems Criterion from Tony. Thank you so much, Tony. I revisited The Farewell. Oh, I have not watched, I don't even think I watched this on physical media when I bought it. So this was my first time watching it at home and had a great time with it because watched it with the family. We all enjoyed it. All right. I was feeling it. I had to have a, a double Joker night. I had to have a double Joker night because, or I'll go like this. This is better. I mean, Heath Ledger's performance is so iconic. It's unbeatable. It is just so amazing. And then Joaquin comes in and gives it a little bit of competition. He won the Oscar as well, obviously. And it's they're just amazing. Amazing interpretations. That's what I'm talking about. Different interpretations, both equally done well. It's just so good. So good. All right. Silence of the Lambs on 4K wonderful transfer. I really wanted to watch this one because I hadn't watched it yet because of the 4k transfer. It's a great transfer. I highly recommend picking this up. I've seen this at Best Buy. It's $19.99, I believe. So go and pick this up. What are you waiting for? Just get it. Just go and get it. It's there waiting for you. Okay. Best picture winner. We have Spotlight. This is a heavy film, but it's necessary. It, it's, it's such a great movie about true events true story michael key this is just a great cast overall michael keaton rachel mcadams mark ruffalo who else is in here uh stanley tucci Liev schreiber i mean come on if you have not seen spotlight please pick it up please do or at least stream it somewhere if you can it's a great probably underrated movie i would put this in the underrated category i really would all right finally ending with what have i already seen Creed 1 and 2 because I binged the Rocky franchise. It was one of my franchises that I was going to watch this month and I indeed did. So I just kept on going with Creed and Creed 2. I, I like them both. I really do. And I know Creed 3 is being made right now without Sly. That is unfortunate, but I cannot wait for more Creed. So that is everything that I watched in the month of March besides my never seen it movies. Where do I find the time? I honestly have no idea. Let me know down below what you guys watched in the month of March. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below before you leave and I'll see you next time.